Okay, well, if you were seeking confusion on this example, I'm sure you found it. So, what was the flaw? Well, thread one, if it called mock port allocate internal, and then it wanted to next call IPC port translate receive, if an attacker could get in between those two functions, what we had was fundamentally this allocated a new port and gave it an automatically generated name, and then this translate receive essentially looked up the information about that port based on the name. But if the attacker could come in and destroy that port just in time, then they could call mock port insert write, and that actually allows them to specify the name. And so the specification of a name here would lead to a incorrect lookup by this function, which would subsequently cause type confusion because it would be looking up some completely different port, potentially with a different port ID. So to see where that's coming from, let's go ahead and go to the code. All right, so we said in the hint to start at mock timer create trap. And so this function is just creating a mock kernel timer. So it's creating a mock kernel timer. And what is it doing? Well, first it's doing a Z alloc of a timer. And to be clear, this is a zone alloc. This is not a zeroized alloc. So if you're thinking that, you know, from the uninitialized data access section, uh, that, okay, well, this is doing a zeroed alloc. Nope, it's doing a zone alloc. And that just pertains to how the mock kernel does its heap memory management. So it allocates space for a timer object, this mock kernel timer. And then it calls this mock port alloc internal. So we go into that. Oh, let's go back for a second. Okay, so this port allocate internal is going to create a new port with uh, receive write. And this right here is, it looks like, you know, it's getting the address of this. Well, if we take a look at this, we can see that it's actually a global that already has some stuff filled in. So the name is set to false, the prealloc is set to true, and the length is set to the size of that particular type. So that's already filled in, so it's just providing a pointer to that. And then this name at this point is set to null. So this is not actually filled in. So essentially this function is going to be filling in the name and then this function is going to be using that name to fill in the port. So, you know, if we went in here, we wanted to find out, you know, how is this name selected? Uh, we can look down here and we can say, okay, well, if QOSP name is true, so, okay, where did that come from? Coming back, it was from this. And is name equal to true? No, it's equal to false. So we go forward again, and so that means that it's going to call this function. So this function is one where if you already have a name, it uses that name, and in this one, it just creates it and chooses the name itself. So allocates port. If successful, port is returned locked. So that's interesting. So there's some locking, there's some mutual exclusion going on here. So it's gonna allocate a port, and we wanna see where is the name created. Okay, name comes from some name that's created inside of here name seems to be filled in by this object alloc and we look at this it talks about you know nothing is locked if successful an object is returned the space is right locked on successful return so okay the space has some mutual exclusion as well and so name here ultimately is coming in from this object and it's casting a mock port to name Okay, so that's good enough just for us to know that, you know, some number is going to be associated. It's going to be filled in in this function. It's going to be stuck into this name temporary variable. Name temporary variable is going to be uh, assigned to the dereferenced name pointer. And that means that when we come back from this, the name pointer should be filled in. And also, I guess I just searched down, but I didn't confirm. It's uh, mock port write receive. So that was the type that was passed in here. Okay, so now the name is going to be filled in, but as we said, the, the core crux of the vulnerability is that although this thing will fill in a name, this is going to be doing a lookup based on that name. So if we go in here, we can see how is name used. IPC object translate passes a name, go to that definition. This then gives us a little dead end, so we're going to have to go find the actual definition. And it is right here find the name and like obviously i gave you this in the hints so you know if you couldn't find the definition you could go back to the hint and find it there and then we can see the name is used in something called ipc write lookup read so that sounds like a lookup to me go to the definition of the lookup read and it turns out that it's defined as lookup write which is nice and intuitive but uh, inside of lookup write again following the name 
it looks like it's passed into IPC entry lookup. So again, that is a lookup. So we've got a space that is this sort of capabilities list. It's going to go in and, you know, go into a table and try to look up something based on name. And that fundamentally is the cause of this type confusion. So going all the way back to our timer create. So again, allocate creates a thing, gives it a name, but it doesn't pass back directly the pointer to the port. Instead, it chooses to go and look up that port based on the reference that exists inside of this uh, space, inside of the namespace, this myspace here. So basically it created it, stuck a reference in there, then it looked it up based on name here. So then I gave you two functions, you know, that, you know, were essentially your hint to figure out what would actually cause the type confusion to occur. One of those functions was the mock port destroy, the kernel side version. And I mentioned in the hints that there's an important notif there's an important comment in the documentation. It says that when mock port destroy function deallocates all rights associate uh, denoted by a name, the name becomes immediately available for reuse. And so it's this fact that the name becomes available for reuse, which allows the attacker to reinsert something and give it the name. Uh, basically destroy the name that was created here. So this mock port allocate, this creates something, it has a name. Now this name hasn't been actually, you know, passed back to user space or anything at this point. So the attacker would fundamentally take advantage of the fact that naming is sort of a deterministic operation. So they could create a port and they could destroy that port before they called into this MK timer create. And as long as they create and destroy, destroy a port before this is called, then they can actually know what name will be picked automatically inside of this function. So even though they don't, you know, have this directly leaked back, just some determinism here allows them to know what the name will be used here. So consequently, you know, they create a port, destroy a port, call this function, and then this function uses that name. And then if they can interleave right here after the name has been put into use, but before the lookup has occurred, then they can destroy the port based on that name that they expect it to have because of the determinism. And then they can insert the right. And if you look at the documentation for insert right, the second parameter is a name. And it says the name by which the task will know the right. So they can create some completely different right. And this right is effect effectively a port. So they can take a port and they can say, okay, this port should be named this, this thing that I already, you know, expect it to have the name based on the determinism. And consequently, after they do that, both the destroy and the insert, then if the code continues on from that, if they you know, succeeded in their race, if they won the race and got those two functions called in between these two functions, then this receive lookup will be looking something up, but that insert right would have caused the attacker to take something else, completely different type, and use that name for a different type, which would have it look this up. And then subsequently, you know, the rest of this code is expecting that it's got a timer port to be used, but instead it's a completely different type. So that is the core vulnerability here. What was the fix for that? Well, if we look at a diff between the updated code, what we see is that fundamentally this race condition and this lookup, that is the root cause for the type confusion is actually completely eliminated. So effectively this code has been more or less rewritten and no longer do we have this IPC port translate receive. Instead, what we have is there's an allocation of a port with a function that passes back a pointer to that port. And so now there is no opportunity for the attacker to change that out to some different port because basically it is just, you know, pointing at an object and that object is what will be used throughout the rest of this. Now I have to, you know, signal one word of caution here. They have not in any way sort of fundamentally changed the fact that race condition, you know, if we assumed that it was possible to race and get in between these two functions, you know, why can't we race and get in between any other functions? Fundamentally, that's going to come down to, well, you probably can do that, but whether or not that is advantageous to the attacker fundamentally comes down to which functions are called, do they lock ports, do they lock spaces, and all of this sort of mutual exclusion that's occurring.
What I can say is that I'm not familiar enough with the XNU code to, you know, truly say that there are not other opportunities to, to play games such as, you know, okay, a port got handed back, but, you know, maybe now a rate, an attacker can do some sort of race that can cause the, you know, deallocation of that port and subsequently cause a use after free in the rest of the code. Again, I'm just not familiar enough with this code. I don't know all the other functions and, you know, really haven't, uh, even though I work for Apple, I was not a kernel security person. I was a firmware security person. So I'm not really, you know, in a position to say anything authoritative about what or what not would still be possible here. Really just digging into this, you know, vulnerability and other XNU vulnerabilities in this section uh, is kind of my initial introduction to this code base. You know, just like you, if you've never looked at it before, I'd never looked at it before either. All right, so as far as I can tell, you know, the type confusion was fixed here.